that is about a, it's a divorce story. It's one woman's divorce story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going to get into that story. Um, welcome to the Advice Show podcast, where we talk about the best and worst advice we've ever been given and uh, how to navigate the world with the help of others. I'm your host, uh, Robert K. Elder, and today we're talking with Jackie Pilosoff. She's the author of the new book, Divorce Girl Smiling. That's also the name of her blog and her Twitter handle. Uh, Jackie also writes the Help Squad consumer column for Sometimes Media Local. Uh, she'll be launching her new book, uh, throwing a divorce a divorce party at uh, not a divorce. If you throw a divorce, it's a very different thing. <laughs> but she's throwing a divorce party at Pinstripes in Northbrook on Thursday, January thirtieth at seven p.m. Uh, the event will also serve as a fundraiser for the Lilac Tree, which is a nonprofit organization that helps divorced women support, uh, gives them support and education. Um, the Advice Show is sponsored by Sure, purveyors of professional microphones and headphones. Check them out at Sure.com. That's S-H-U-R-E. And uh, Jackie, welcome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know the, um, the story behind the name. Tell me the story behind the name, Divorce Girl Smiling. Okay, honestly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I want you to be dishonest. It'll be a much better so podcast. So I had a blog. And it was just JackiePillisoff.com. And mm -hmm. it wasn't really getting views. And I thought, okay, I, I started blogging about divorce a lot. Mm -hmm. And the views started going up. So I realized that I had to brand this thing. And the name divorce had to be in it somewhere. I started looking around. And I found a blog called Single Dad Laughing. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic blog. The guy is hysterical. It's it's great and it's I think gets forty thousand views a day something like that and sure. I thought oh well if he's single dad laughing I can be divorce girl smiling well because that was so, uh, that was my question it's like why is it just smiling why isn't divorce girl laughing well or why I almost went with divorce girl laughing but I don't want people to think that divorce is a laughing matter or what about like cackling maniacally no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 tell me because it's not a laughing matter and it's not even something to smile about but I want I'm not encouraging divorce and I'm not saying divorce is a happy thing I'm saying that if you get divorced you can be happy and smile sure. so I thought that was a perfect name uh, and Jackie how long have you been divorced I've been separated seven years, divorced for five. Okay. And so in that, again, because this is the advice show, tell me about, again, the best advice you got when you were going through this very hard thing, and then I want the worst advice. Okay. Can I do the worst advice first? Oh, please, first? please, please. <laughs> the worst advice, because I just heard when you said this in the intro, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, what was the worst advice? And it came to me really, really quickly. Don't date right away. Just take some time for yourself. And I think that everybody who says that to you is married. And they don't understand that when, when you get divorced, you've already been alone. Mm -hmm. Because you don't wake up one day and say, I think I'll get divorced. So you have been unhappy. You've been knowing it was over. Probably both of you have been knowing for a long time, trying to work it out, especially if you have kids. You want the marriage to work. So some people are unhappy and and the divorce really has been going on for five years before they actually get divorced. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says, don't date, you don't want to date right away. What are you supposed to do? Sit home by yourself? You know, so I think that was the worst advice I got. And so many people said that. I think it's okay to go out and have a good time. I don't care if it's the day after your husband or wife moves out. I think that for a long time, when someone moves out, it's a relief and so you should go out there and meet people and just develop friendships, whatever those turn into. Just sure. don't get married. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think you can understand where the advice comes from because I think, uh, especially in our culture, um, perhaps it comes from a place that, that people don't believe that we know how to be alone. Uh, is, is that fair? Is that, yes, is that... I've written blogs about that a lot. Yeah. How to be okay with being alone. I love being alone. I didn't even get married till I was 35. I know how to live by myself. I know how to do spend weekends completely by myself. I actually enjoy it. You're right. Um, so, so when people say, yeah, don't date right away, do things by yourself, you can do both. You can still date and you can still do things by yourself. Being alone is very important to learn how to enjoy that and take advantage of it. Okay, so tell me about the best advice. Hmm. The best advice I got was let God take the wheel. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? 
there's a song, Let Jesus Take the Wheel, but I want to put this for all religions. So <laughs> let God drive. Mm-hmm. Let God take the wheel. Because if you worry, I have a, I have a really good friend who's a life coach, and she, she has something that she calls spinning. Right. And I'm not talking about the exercise class. I'm talking about laying in bed at night and sitting there worrying about what's going on. Um, it's a mental theater. Mental theater. That's yeah. such a good way to put it. Yeah. You sit there and you lay in bed and you think, okay, I have court tomorrow. What's going to happen? I have to face my ex-husband. He's trying to get the ki- cust- more custody with the kids. He's not paying child support. What am I going to do if he won't pay for this next month? I have to find a job. The job I thought I was going to get didn't come through. What am I going to do? And your head just spins and spins and spins. It's completely a waste of energy. It's completely a waste of everything. You have to block it out of your mind and just say, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and do the best I can. I'm going to seize every opportunity to meet people through business, socially, whatever. I'm going to be a good mother. I'm going to take care of my children as best I can. And I'm going to support myself if it's looking for a job or doing my job the best way I possibly can. So much is out of our control. You know, how your ex acts is completely out of your control. What is 100% in your control is how you act. Right. So all you can do is try to take the high road and be the best person you possibly can, regardless of what that person says or does to you. My sister used to say this to me all the time. Just be nice, because did anybody ever say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have been nice? Nobody ever says that. (laughs) That's great advice. That's a great advice. Right? Well, you know, Nora Ephraim uh, famously said, you know, uh, never marry a man that you wouldn't want to be divorced from. (laughs) <laughs> is that fair? Is that good advice? I love her. I, I actually wrote a blog on what a amazing woman she was. Um, say that again to me. Never marry a man you wouldn't want to be divorced from. Um, yeah, I mean, she nailed it, you know? <laughs> she, she, was an ama- she said a lot of really great things, a lot. <laughs> Well, but but is that is that fair? It's it's one of those things where I think when you you know when you're getting married, it's a it's a decision of hope, you know, and planning. And I don't think people want to consider like, wow, well, what if this doesn't work out? You know, because you want to believe the best in your partner. Um, do you think um, you know the old dictums hold up that the the reasons that uh, marriage falls apart are you know usually two things that either falls apart because of sex or money. Well, I heard one statistic that the biggest reason for divorce, I heard this a while ago, and I have to believe it's still true, is addiction. Mm -hmm. So whether that be a sex addiction where the person's cheating or an alcohol addiction or drugs or gambling or whatever, that's the number one reason for divorce, I heard. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you believe that's true? I don't know. I don't know. I'm happily married. And I like <laughs> just talking to you that's, makes me nervous. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry because I hope people know that this blog is not about celebrating or encouraging divorce. Sure. I was a happily married person. I loved being married so much. I hope to be married again someday. Mm-hmm. Um but you can't be afraid when you're married. It's just like anything else. Live every day and enjoy every day with your wife. You don't know if you're going to change or she's going to change in five years. So all you can do is really enjoy your time now. You have to hope that you have a strong bond, that you're best friends, that through these changes you can survive. Like, God forbid, if somebody starts to have an alcohol problem, one of you guys. You have to hope that the other one is going to stand by you. You're going to get through it together. You're going to get help, and you're going to remain together forever, no matter what. Same thing as, like, getting cancer or something. Sure. Okay? So, But don't be nervous because you have to just live your life every day. If you're happily married, that's wonderful. It's an amazing thing. I hope to be that way someday sure. again. Well, and I, and I, I want to I actually <clears throat> go, go with that uh, sort of full speed. And why did you choose to define yourself by this event in your life, you know, divorce, uh, you know, in effect, turning it into a personal brand? Good question. It, it was sort of started by accident almost. So, you know, I'm a writer. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of joy out of writing. So when I was getting divorced, that was my thing. That's what got me through my divorce. I started writing, and I wrote a novel. 
okay? And every time I was upset or sad or fearful or felt bad, I would go to my computer, I would write, and I would feel great because I'd put it all on paper. So people, when the book came out, people started emailing me and saying, oh, I didn't know you were divorced. I'm going through a divorce. And they started asking my advice. So I started blogging about divorce. And every time I would write a blog, I would get pretty good views. And so my now 87-year-old father, who is an extremely successful businessman and knows really street smart, knows business, said, you should be writing about divorce every day. There's a huge market for it. And I was thinking, I'm sure it's saturated. I'm sure there's a million people. There really wasn't. Hmm. Because when I went to set up my website, my designer said, well, go to some divorce blogs and, and tell me what you like. And I went to look, and there was nothing. So I said, oh, my gosh, I think I might have something here. And for me, I don't like to define my being as the divorce girl smiling. That's only part of my life. But for me, the, the, the amount of emails and responses I get from people every day saying, I read your blog. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much you're helping me. I read it all the time. That is an amazing way to live your life. So this isn't really about my divorce anymore. It started out that way. But then now this is now about helping other people get through that. Sure. Well, I'm interested in, you know, again, choosing that brand, uh, you know, and being known as Divorce Girl Smiling. How has that complicated your love life? Very much so. <laughs> well, t- tell me, tell me. Okay, so there's a few things. So I, it's not all rosy. As I do get some good comments, but I get a lot of negative, like people getting angry. They don't want to hear the truth. So I've been called really bad names. Um, I've been threatened and things, and that's scary to live with. So that's kind of a downside. Mm-hmm. Um Personally, my ex-husband was not a fan at first. (laughs) He was extremely upset, and I don't blame him. If I found out that my ex was started a divorce blog, I would think I was going to be the star of it and be on it every minute. But I think as he started to read the blogs and see that this is not about he and I, this is about divorce in general and helping other people, and that it wasn't so specific, and that he's not mentioned in it very much at all I think he's okay with it now Mm -hmm. um so that was one thing Uh, is he showing up to your party because that's what I want to see he is he's actually um (laughs) bringing the my kids there and they're gonna help out and he's gonna take them home and uh you know he he and I are in a great place we weren't always that way but now we're co-parenting in a really productive way and it's it's wonder it's working wonderfully Mm -hmm. so was Nora Ephraim right uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, uh, but, but t- I, I'm very, uh, I'm very, um. Oh, oh, and I wanted to tell you one more thing yes. that is complicated. So someone said to me, nobody's going to want to date you knowing you are, you're a divorce blogger. And I called up a friend of mine who's a divorced guy, and I said, is that true? And he goes, are you asking me out on a date? Because if you are, I'll go. (laughs) So (laughs) I said, oh, cool. (laughs) So, you know, maybe people would feel um, uncomfortable dating me because they're afraid our date the night before is going to end up all over the internet. Right. But, but that's just any blogger. That's dating right. any writer. But, you know, if someone is, is uh, has you in their sights and, you know, you say you want to be married again and they want to marry you, so do you end up destroying your brand if you get married? If I get married, I'll always be a divorced person. Mm-hmm. So I can always write about this. I'll probably change, I might change the focus a little bit to maybe a woman in her 40s or um, second marriages. But I'll always be divorced and I'll always understand all those feelings that go start at the beginning of a divorce and develop even years later. Sure. And so you can't take that away from me even if I get married again. You know, there are so many women that are married for the second time that read my blog. 
Cool. Well, and, and, and I'm really interested, again, because this is the advice show. I want to bring this back to actual advice. Um, and I want to talk about, you know, signs that your marriage might be troubled or, you know, things you can do. Uh, in the, the new book, again, also called Divorce Girl Smiling, um, your protagonist, the thing that sort of lets her know is that uh, her sex life has been on a downswing, mm-hmm. right? So, so I think that's a very uh, common one. But what are the other signs? Um, when, when there's no communication, you know, people who are divorced will tell me it was like living with a roommate, Mm -hmm. you know, relationships have to constantly be nourished. You said you're happily married. I bet you work at that. I bet both of you are, have a desire to make the relationship work. It's a priority. You're probably both busy working. Do you have kids? Uh, Five-year-old twins. Oh, okay. So you have kids. So you guys are beyond busy. Yeah. But you make an effort to make it work. And when people stop making that effort and they don't care anymore or they turn to somebody else because they think that's going to make them happy, then that's when marriages end, when communication breaks down. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that if your marriage is in trouble, some people, well, this is kind of the same thing, but one person stops talking, stops telling their spouse, stops talking to their spouse like they're their best friend. You know, like if I have a problem, my spouse is the one I should tell first, right? Don't you consider your wife your very best friend? I think I have a very best friend so that I don't have to burden my wife. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, but I'm saying if something really was wrong and you needed something, wouldn't you go to her first? Yeah, because, you know, in some uh, in some definitions, you're a team, you know? So you have to sort of, you know, that's the front line of your... I think in all definitions, you're a team. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely. a team. And that's that, right. That, you're and the front it's line, funny, you're my dealing ex-husband with the used to say, we were never a team. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? He would say, we, we really were never a team. We were always competing. Huh. We were competing for who's going to take the kids to this. I have to do this. He was right. Hmm. So well, and and what um uh, what lessons from your divorce have you taken into your new life and your new approach to love? Well, you have to read the blog. That's what I write about <laughs> all the time. I tell people well, give, in give, my blog what th- I did right, what I did wrong. Okay. Well, well, give us three things. Okay. First of all, I'm a true believer in mediation versus litigation, okay? Going to court and letting a judge decide your future is a huge mistake. Now, I know there's exceptions. You can't control what your ex wants to do. But if you just suck up your pride and talk to your soon to be X. You can save so much time and money. It's so much better for the kids. You know, I was involved in litigation, post divorce litigation with my ex a couple years ago. And we're spending all this money on attorneys. And one day I called him up and said, let's just settle this right now. And we talked for two hours and we had a deal. Mm -hmm. He and I, we didn't want to talk to each other. I said, you can call me every bad name in the book. Just go ahead. Go. You have free reign. Do anything you want. I don't even care anymore. I just don't want to pay these lawyers, and I want to come to this conclusion of what we're doing. So that's my first piece of advice. You're you're disrupting an entire industry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's not true because attorneys who – they want to – you can mediate with your attorneys. Your attorneys can come to an agreement. You don't have to drop your attorney and go to a mediator. Your attorney can help you get, um, get to an agreement. I mean, I'm not, I'm not bashing divorce attorneys by any means. They're, they're, they have extremely difficult jobs. But I think that they'll be the first one to tell you try to work it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so two other things. And, again, this, is, this can be – Advice in dealing with divorce or uh, just dealing with... Okay, this is a biggie. Okay. Do not rush into a second marriage. Should I say it again? (laughs) Go go ahead. ahead. Do not rush into a second marriage. (laughs) 72% of second marriages fail. Why? Because people want to mask the pain of the first divorce by getting married again. So that by the time they get married... by the time they are going through their second divorce, they're still mourning the first divorce. They're trying to put a Band-Aid on something. I don't, 
for the life of me, cannot understand the rushing into a second marriage. If you're in love and you're monogamous, what's wrong with that? It's a wonderful thing. No need for marriage Mm -hmm. for a long time until you're sure and you have completely healed from your first marriage. You can even wear a ring and be engaged. Okay, and the third piece. Um, uh, Can I think about it? Yeah. Um, well, and, and I want to re-ask a question that I started with, and that is, you know, how do you, um, you know, as a divorced girl smiling, how has it made you approach love differently? Great question. I'm a completely different person. Okay. You know, I look for different things now. Um, I don't know if I should say, I mean, I, I th- hope it's okay. So I've been with the same person for five years. And when I would, I always tell him this to his face. I wouldn't have even looked at him when I was younger because I was stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay. I look for different things now. I look for loyalty. I look for somebody who makes me a better person. I look for um, humor. Well, I always looked for humor. I think that's a huge plus in someone because I think when you have tough times, if you can laugh, you're you're so helping your relationship. And I just look for a different kind of person, somebody who's going to be my friend, someone who has my back. And and I'm not saying my ex-husband didn't have these things. I don't want to say that. But I'm saying that when you're older, you look for different things. And you're just much smarter. It's probably the only benefit of getting older. Right. Well, and I'm I'm also curious because I, I you know, I, I've talked about this before. I wrote a couple of uh, uh, relationship books that were, you know, uh, started out as websites. But one of the entries is always chemistry. And that is uh, uh, as much about families and families getting along as it is about sexual chemistry. And so uh, I'm guessing that I mean, is that a high priority that your 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 attraction has to be there? Like, where does that fall? Okay, so everyone thinks attraction is like looks, and when you first look at somebody, I do not agree. I think chemistry can happen at any point. So several years ago, I was set up on a blind date by my dad and his friend. Oh, that's the guy great. comes to the door. I'm like, oh shit. Am I allowed to say shit? I'm like, Uh, oh, shit. You are now. Okay. (laughs) So I go, there's no way. Now I have to go to dinner and sit with this guy for the, you know, oh, my, you know. Halfway through dinner, I fell in love with the guy Uh. because he had, he just had so much good things, so many good things to say. Mm. And I looked in his eyes and I thought, he really is cute. And he has this great smile with this little front lip thing going on. And I'm going to try, I think I want to kiss that (laughs) because I loved his personality so much. And we ended up dating for a few months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think chemistry goes so far beyond looks. Have you ever met a beautiful woman and then, like, you talk to her for a few minutes and you're like, okay, so boring, not even that cute. Can work both ways. Uh, Yes, too many times. So I say to people on blind dates, and this could be the third piece of advice. Okay. So let's say you put your profile up on Match.com and you go out on these dates. I can't even believe how many people say, I knew within the first nine seconds. And I say, take the approach of, you know, I could end up being best friends with this person. Or he could bring something enriching. He could enrich my life in some way. Whether it's business or, um, you know, or anything. He could introduce me to my future husband. Or I could introduce him to his future wife. So I think you have to give people much more of a chance and don't be so close-minded the minute you see them and you don't want to, like, rip their clothes off. But that helps. <laughs> that is nice. That's good, too. <laughs> well, and, and um, uh, th- this leads me to sort of my next sort of curiosity, and that is how online dating has changed the equation. Because, you know, I have friends who have met their significant others and their husbands <clears throat> and their wives. Um, but also, you know, friends of mine who are out there now, uh, female friends who are on Match.com, and it can be good, but it seems very predatory. It seems very, um, you know, some of the aggressively sexual messages they get from possible suitors seems I know, like it's, it's sick. <laughs> it, okay, this is how I compare. I never went on any of those dating sites, but I don't frown on it. I think they're really good, and they're like the number way to meet, number one way to meet people. 
but I compare it to shopping at Lowman's. You know how you go into Lowman's, and which is going out of business. I, guess, I just yeah. saw that. Okay, you know how you have to sift through a thousand shirts, and then you find this one gem, and you're like, "Wow, it's a, you know, Michael Kors, and it's only fifteen bucks." Okay, that's exactly what online dating is. You have to sift through all the crap and all the disgusting people to but there are really good people mingled in with those mixed in with those other people. Okay. Um and uh <clears throat> what would you, you know, what do you wish now that you as you at this age could go back and uh tell the you that was going through divorce? What advice would you give her? Oh boy. Read Divorce Girl Smiling <laughs> and get the book. That's, it's available on Amazon. I was, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that you you come up with a time travel problem then. But what's you know what one thing would have helped you the most? I would say, believe in yourself and make good choices that will lead to self love. Because when people get divorced, I wrote a blog called like. I always say I did a lot of stupid things when I got divorced. I'm not going to say what they were. Oh, give us one. Okay. Please give us one. Please. <laughs> well, actually. We want his name and address. Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> give, give us one stupid thing. All right. So one stupid thing is when I first first getting divorced, I was drinking a lot. And that's really common. I was going out to the bars a lot. I was drinking. I was trying to soothe the pain with alcohol something you really have to watch. One night I had a couple glasses of wine. A ba- I had a babysitter. My sitter called before I ate dinner and said, your little girl just threw up. So I had to leave the restaurant. And I got pulled over. And, I, you know, I, I got so lucky. I didn't even, you know, the cop said, like, what's your hurry? I said, my daughter is five. She just threw up. I really have to get home to see her. And I was just so lucky that I didn't get a DUI. Not to say I wouldn't have passed a breathalyzer test. I'm not sure. But I shouldn't have been drinking more than one glass of wine and driving. And to this day, I have never drank more than one glass of wine and driven. Or unless I had a big meal or something, you know, then I could have like one and a half. But I'm really a stickler for that. And that was like a really stupid thing. I could have had a DUI. I mean, that's would have really hurt me during my divorce. And I'm normally not a big drinker. So people do these stupid things. And when you're getting divorced, you can either do something really stupid and you can make bad choices by like going out and sleeping with a bunch of people or drinking or turning to drugs or whatever. Or you can make good choices like maybe faith and and talking to God, working out, um, um finding a passion like writing for me or a hobby or a fundraising thing or something that's going to make you feel good about yourself so that you have self-love because when you have self-love you're such a better person that then you're going to meet somebody because you're out there and you're projecting this really good self and everybody wants to be around you right yeah no, no, so so i advice. think if somebody said how do i meet someone love yourself you know, and have this attitude of you either like me or you don't. Here, here I am. Do you like me? If not, okay, that's okay. If you do, great. Yeah, that's old uh, love line advice. It's uh, from, you know Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. It was just spend time making yourself the most attractive package possible. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to switch gears here really quick because you are our help squad columnist, mm-hmm. uh, and again, that's you know you help people solve uh, consumer disputes and bills and that sort of thing. But I'm curious, you know, you, you've talked to a lot of people, and whether it's, you know, divorce advice or you're helping them with companies, how do people make it hard to help them, you know? And I've just, I've just seen this as an editor, so I've, I, I'm, I'm uh, asking, you know, you to reach out to, 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 to readers and listeners and say, like, here's how, to help, here's how to help me help you stop doing X, Y, and Z. Okay, you mean for the... I don't understand. So, like, for example, <laughs> uh, I noticed that we get a lot of requests and people <clears throat> ramble for four pages rather than have a paragraph oh, of cause yes. and effect and here's how you can help. Yes. So, so what are the so other options? So you just obstacles? answered the question. <laughs> so basically, yes, and then you're talking to somebody and they tell you 
their life story, which is fine. Most of the people I've talked to have been so nice, and they just want help. Right. So I would say um, be concise. And what I've found doing Help Squad is when I talk to these companies, it's almost like, do you ever watch the show Restaurant Impossible? The yeah. guy just gets it done. Right. Okay? So I, I now say to people, I want this wrapped up today. You know? There's no sense in waiting. It's nonsense. No, not we'll look into it and we'll call you next week. No, let's just get it done now. That's like been working really well. I was going to say, you're just quoting Elvis and you don't know it. That was, <laughs> that, that was his thing. It was taking care of business in a flash. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, this has uh, been uh, Jackie Pilosoff. I'm uh, Robert K. Elder, and you've been listening to The Advice Show, part of the Sun-Times Media Local Podcast Network. Uh, our music was composed by Hernan Sanchez. And again, our guest has been Jackie Pilosoff. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rob. Thanks.